So in this video I'm going to concentrate on the growth because that for me is the most exciting tree software. Here are some results that were created and I've created my own library with assets. I'm just showing you some different variations that I've done before. So all of it is pretty top quality, pretty top notch, get into a large amount of detail and they all look pretty good and with every version it gets better. Yeah, so here are the twigs, and that's what they look like. Let's see how it works. Shift A, mesh, the Grove 6. Now we need to enable the toolbar and sort of enlarge the last operator scene. So here we have all the controls. And what I really like about it is that there are a lot of presets. Basically, the only way I've used it so far is by just choosing a preset. So let's grow London Plane Tree. So once we have the London plane, we need to load up some twigs. And to do that, once you've downloaded them, we have to append them to the scene. File, append, twigs, London plane twig, object, select them both, append, and I'm actually going to move them to the last layer, which I know will screw up my tree. So this is the one important thing to note about the growth. It only functions with the last operator property. Meaning that if we do anything else afterwards, like what I just did is move those elements to that different layer, you see that none of the properties are available. So let's start again. Shift A. Mesh, the Grove 6, London Plane. The nice thing also about the plugin is that it remembers the last settings that were used. So now we should have the twigs, apical twig, lateral twig. And after that, we're ready to grow. We just press this button here, grow. It starts to grow. Then there's the ears that can be added. Four ears. And then in some important information about how old the tree is and how tall it is. So I can keep on pressing grow. Now what, an important thing to notice, after a while, the tree, it does become slower to generate a tree. If we want to have it a decent size. And London plane trees, they can be upwards of 20 meters. So right now we're at 6.2 meters tall. It keeps growing. Now, a really cool feature that I find quite handy is prune. The way it works is by drawing grease pencil strokes. So if I press and hold D, draw a grease pencil stroke here, and then press prune, that branch disappears. This branch. prune and that's gone and then we can keep growing and it's going to remember that those have been pruned but again with every subsequent growth it becomes quite a bit slower I'm just going to prune this bit here as well prune and you can see the amount of detail it's quite beautiful actually the way that it works is that this is one mesh and it grabs some vertices grabs the normals I believe of the vertices and if it has two particle systems yeah, so once we get up to 8.3 meters or so it does get a little bit heavier so that's the basics of it so now I'm going to move this tree over and another really nice feature about the growth is that it can interact with existing geometry so if I create a scene very crude scene I'll show you what I mean so we can specify where a tree will grow by adding an empty. So if you scroll all the way down, there's something called react to a force. So if we say block, and you have all, deck, all kinds of different options. I've only played so far with block for the environment. I find the one called environment. So now, if this tree grows and comes close to this object, in reality it should be blocked. Let's see how well it works. So we'll hit grow a couple of times. 
Right, so now we're getting to where we hit the object. And again, grow takes a bit of time. And you can see that it's actually stopping close to it. There's still some interactions with the plane, however, they're quite limited. And because it's a single plane, maybe it's not subdivided. I'm not really sure why, but that to me is really good already. Because then all we can do is either move the tree So you can see how it's pruned pretty good in a pretty nice line. We hit render. It looks really good and really convincing. I probably should have trimmed some bits. Oh yes, and I should also mention that it comes with textures for the box, which in, in themselves they're quite good. Yeah, so what I like about it is that it's very quick. A couple more things I want to show you. We can also grow multiple trees. Let me actually go to a new layer. So shift A mesh the growth trees. Let's add five trees and let's grow them 10 meters apart. Grow. And I'm just going to leave the ash trees as they were. So it randomly places the trees and it keeps growing them. However, that's five times or ten times or fifty times the amount of geometry. So you can imagine once we start growing a little bit more, adding those extra ears is adding significant amount of geometry. So it does tend to get quite slow. There's a nice setting here also, viewport detail, and I think it's a decimate modifier as part of the add-on package. So we're actually seeing even less detail than will actually be rendered. So that's how the trees grow. As you can see, it takes time. Let's press grow once more. Now I wouldn't recommend to do many trees at the same time unless there's a really good need for it like interaction with an existing environment or interaction with the trees or a prune or some sort of camera or animation where the trees are in very close focus because they are really heavy geometry they're going to make your scene much slower and i know there's been work that's been done to optimize the plugin as much as possible Are we there yet? Almost there. I think. I know. Yes! Here we are. Okay. But again, the trees look really nice. But as you can see, it does, the, the workflow does take a while. So it's definitely something that I recommend doing as a separate part of your workflow as opposed to thinking about trees directly when you're working in your scenes. So similar to the way we can grow one tree, we can grow multiple trees with an empties, with, with empties selected. So if I select all these trees, deselect my other object, shift A, add mesh, the grow of six. And now we get trees at each empty. And from there we can grow them in the same way. So the nice thing about this method is that, whoops, we can set up reaction force block and it remembers the last one I think this may be called plane 2 oh it's called just plane plane now I'm not sure what the interactivity is between them but I know they're all growing from the same set if the developer is watching it will be good to know whether if they grow from the same set there's interaction between them or if or we or do we always need to press or specify direct force so here they are you know they interact pretty nicely with the environment yeah actually let's see are they intersecting yeah, 
Well, not really. Only that end bit, but I know that's an end branch because the particle is coming from somewhere over here. Yeah, there's a bit of intersection. Nothing that can't be pruned. So it works really well with empty objects, it works quite well with interaction with doing objects. And the last thing that's been introduced in this last version is animation. So if I grow another tree, just do one. So now all the way on the bottom, there's something called animate. So now if we just press animate wind, it's pretty much all we need to do. And again, all these things take a while, so you have to take into account. And here it is, it's playing the animation in real time. It's a bit heavy, it's 4 frames per second. But it's amazing, let's just do frame dropping. Yeah. And again, if we render it, it looks pretty good. I think my scene is a little bit too dark here, but in general it looks really good. So, what are the use cases for this? Again, because it takes significant amount of geometry, I would recommend doing these for only close-up trees, or trees that are closer in the front. If you need to fill your scene with many, many trees, this, this is probably not the best way to do it. 